Today's build, we're gonna build a simple transmission plate for our race tractor, and we're gonna take you through all the steps of the way. And there's a bit to be learned in this process as well. You see, this transmission shaft commonly breaks roughly on this neck here once you start putting a lot of torque and, and whatnot on this transmission. And one of the hesitations that people might have a problem with is actually matching this taper on this neck so that it's nicely seated together. I mean, I'm sure you could just drill a hole and then put some JB weld on it and so <laughs> support it that way, but that's not quite our style here today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna map this tape taper out. Now we're gonna measure this over a one inch length for the taper. And this is important because we're gonna come back to that later when we do this in the lathe. But I digress. Our first two measurements that we're gonna to have to have is the small part of the taper and the large part of the taper. This is important because this is gonna give us our overall taper. Now let's grab some metal out of the junk drawer and throw it in the lathe and start setting this all up. Now we don't really need a special taper attachment to cut this and I'm gonna show you why. Once we throw this in the chuck here, I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna set up the compound and it's actually a lot easier than you might expect. But first, we're gonna to have to cut this off to a one inch length because there's a lot of extra material on this scrap that we're not gonna need for this. Now, one of my little cheat methods I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna roughly start cutting whereabouts I think an inch is. I kind of marked it a little bit with my calipers. And then I'm gonna go back after zeroing my digital readout and I'm gonna measure where it actually is. Then I'm just gonna move over the actual amount that I'm gonna to need to move over, zero it, and that's gonna give me pretty much bang on where I need to be. Full, full disclaimer, I actually moved an extra five or so thou over more than I actually needed, and you'll see that in the end measurement. But this is within 10 thou, so I'm not overly too worried about it. If I wanted to actually get this like super high precision, I probably could have done a complete part off and then measured and then figured out exactly what the difference would be and move it over. But this method here is pretty good and will get you within five or 10 thou. Now for a really fun, easy setup for the taper. Basically what I'm doing here, and we'll later find out that I made a small mistake, is the difference between the top and the bottom was 80 thou. So basically what I'm doing is, is I'm moving my cross slide back and forth one inch. And then I'm gonna slowly adjust my compound in increments until I get that 80 thou over the one inch. As soon as I have that 80 thou over the one inch, in theory, that's gonna give me the exact taper that I want. And some of the more experienced machinists right now have probably already spotted the error that is a very common error <laughs> for a lot of new machinists and even some more experienced machinists like myself as well. <laughs> and also we're on the topic of errors as well. Um, Here's another mistake as well, is I'm tightening this all down here and it's actually moving it a slight, slight bit, probably about five thou over that length. And lucky for me, you measure twice, cut once, <laughs> and this error was spotted really quickly and really early on before I made any large mistakes. Now, once we have that all set up, it's relatively easy from here on in. It's just a matter of grabbing the boring bar and then just work in that compound back and forth until we get the taper that we're looking for. I chose here basically to cut the larger diameter to size and just measure that edge lip. And as soon as I get that larger diameter measurement off the taper, keep in mind, this isn't super duper accurate. We're just looking to be within five or 10 thou. And as soon as I get that larger diameter there, we have our taper and in theory, everything should fit really, really well. And now that we're taking our final pass, let's take this out and take it over to the workstation and have a good look to see if it fits. Now, the bigger part of the diameter is measuring exactly bang on for what we're looking for. And this is fantastic. We were looking for 1.210 and I think we almost have it. However, there's one problem. You guessed it, the taper is somehow wrong. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, you gotta half it. Oh, That's right, for the, those of you that are new to machining, you have to half it. Remember, if you take 
10 thou off on the diameter of something, you're actually taking 20 thou off in total. And lucky for me, the solution was pretty easy. I was just gonna mark it after correcting the taper on the compound. I just marked this with layout die or Sharpie. And then I'm just gonna continue taking material off until I have a very, very thin band of Sharpie left. In theory, if there's a tiny, tiny thin band on the edge of the part left, you're still gonna be really, really close to the original size. Now, keep in mind, it's probably just a little bit out of round when I put it out, took it out and put it back in the lathe. But I mean, this is just a lawnmower racing tractor <laughs> and we're not really, you know, Formula One racing. And this will be more than well within what we're looking for. I hope you guys really enjoy the videos and I don't mind sharing the mistakes with you guys because I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can learn from my mistakes and you don't make the same mistakes as me. Also, and remember, hey, the cost of admission is a big thumbs up and I really appreciate your guys' support. Now, I see a little bit of a band left on there. Let's turn the lathe off and see how much of a band we have actually left. We still have a little bit more material to come off, so we're gonna have to be very gentle here. It's kind of a machining by feel. We're gonna take one more small pass on this, and we're gonna have to pay real close attention to make sure we don't cut too much off. Now for the moment of truth and judgment, and I can assure you, <laughs> spoiler alert, this is gonna fit, and it's gonna fit perfect. In fact, I probably couldn't have aimed any better for a fit than this. And I'll show you how to check that as well. And how we're gonna check this is, that's right, we're gonna use the Sharpie again, and we're gonna paint it kind of with the Sharpie. I mean, we could use layout dye or Prussian blue, and that would work as well, but we're just gonna get a quick kind of view of the, the layout of the landscape here. And basically what this is gonna do is, these two parts are gonna to rub together, and the high points are gonna take away material, or pardon me, the Sharpie. And we can see that there's a small bulge in the casting there, because this isn't perfect. So that's a pretty good fit. Now, the other challenging part of this whole project was, is figuring our bolt hole layout. Now, there's something that actually really good to be learned here, because this is a bit of a challenging job. I'm gonna draw a quick little map of everything, and then we're gonna do a really cool trick. I'm gonna go inside of this bolt hole, I'm gonna measure it and zero it, and then I'm gonna measure across the two of them. Now, basically what this is doing is, is it's taking the first diameter and subtracting it from between centers. Let me explain that one more time to you. I measure the inside diameter of the hole, and then I zero my calipers, and then I measure from inside, from one hole to the inside of the other one. And this is gonna give me my center of hole to center of hole measurement. Now, keep in mind when they manufactured this part, everything's gonna be rounded off to the nearest, you know, inch or half inch or quarter. So if I'm out two or three thou, I'm just gonna to have to chalk that up for a little bit of inaccuracy in the bolts being tapped or anything like that. So for example here, I figured out that from the one hole to the other, I have four inches or three inches, and then I can just mark everything out accordingly from there. Now, one of the most challenging parts of this whole project was is finding the center of where the shaft was. Because remember, we have to drill a hole in the transmission plate and we have to have it super accurate. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use the center hole on the shaft and we're gonna use our center finder and we're gonna zero it out on that part. Now, lucky for me, I have digital readout, and this is gonna to prove to be a lifesaver entirely. Oh wait, and thanks to KBC Tools, who sent me this Uber Flex light, I really appreciate it. It is a game changer at the mill machine. So what I'm gonna do here now that I've zeroed this all out, is I'm gonna go over to this bolt hole here, and then basically just gonna find center of the bolt hole. Now, remember we found center on the shaft, and now we're just gonna find center on the bolt hole. Now, if I zeroed it on the shaft, this is gonna give me my exact XY coordinates from the center of the shaft to the bolt hole. And this is gonna give me the relation 
to all of the other bolt holes as well. I had to double check on two or three of the different holes, which isn't seen here, just to make sure that perhaps the transmission was a little bit turned or a little bit out. And we wanted to make sure that we got the relationship between those super accurate. Remember, if the holes weren't square to that transmission, we would have problems down the road. In case I haven't mentioned, I've already dialed the vise in and it's actually square with the table and parallel. This is important or all my holes would be a little bit out of square and later on down the roads, we might have some problems. Also, I'm pretty sure you've noticed by now that this is a different vise that I have in the mill machine. And the previous vise that I had was one of those cheapo $150 ones off of Amazon. And I was having actually too many, too many questions and not enough answers with it. And one of the main concerns that I had with it was, is the holding power and precision with it. Basically what would happen would be, is I tighten down a part much like this one here, and I could actually feel the spring in the cheap castings of the vise. And I was actually worried about stuff either A, coming out, or B, the actual vise bending and, <laughs> well, kind of knocking everything out and not being as precise as it should be. So we're moving backwards and we're keeping to some of the original stuff that we had. And I think we're all going to be better for it. One day I'm probably going to spring for the Kurt vice, but in the meantime, this GS is going to be just good enough for me. And in the future, what we're going to end up doing is we're actually going to get a bigger vice for the Van Norman that's in the side shop. And we're going to get that set up this summer here. In fact, <laughs> after we're done the whole spring casting season, we're gonna get into setting up all of the machines all summer long. I have a radio alarm drill, a Van Norman, a cylindrical grinder, and many more tools that have been just sitting there waiting to get set up. And I think you guys are gonna really enjoy hanging out and doing that. Now, everyone's probably wondering how we're gonna drill that larger hole for the collar that we made earlier. And it's incredibly simpler than you might expect. I mean, we can have 15 or 20 thou oversized in this, because remember, we're welding that collar in. And the rotor brooch is the way to go. So long as we get our feeds and speeds, which is considerably slower, remember, it's gonna make a reasonably accurate hole with considerably less horsepower. In fact, this is one of the reasons why these rotor brooches are used in mag drills, because they take up less torque because you're not removing all of that material that's left in the center. And since we're using digital readouts, following the blueprints that we made, it's just a matter of going an inch and a half down and an inch and a half over, and boom, we got the center of the hole where we need it. Now, let's take all this stuff out of the mill machine here and fit it onto the transmission and see if it all fits together <laughs> like the blueprint said it would. And as we all expected, everything's lining up pretty nice. Now, the key here with the welding is really, really important here. Now, if you've never done this stuff before, please pay, atten please pay attention quite specifically to this here. We need to tack weld it on all four corners and super quick. Because remember, when you tack something or weld something, it's gonna shrink and kind of pull it to one side. So what I did there is I tacked all four corners and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna weld a quarter of it at a time. I'm gonna weld the left side, then the right side of the quarter, and then I'm gonna fill in the other two quarters that are remaining opposing each other. This is gonna ensure that as the weld's cool, we're not gonna have any hidden stress pulling it off to the left or right or binding anything up later on down the road when we take this off and put that back on. And now it's just a matter of throwing this out on the job box and having some of the other team members come out and pick this bad boy up and install it on the race tractor. And hey, if you like this video, check out some of my other videos and come fall time, we're going to have some race videos as well.